If there was a new MMORPG out there that could capture that nostalgic feeling you had towards older games such as RuneScape, but also give you modern systems in them similar to what you will find in Ashes of Creation, is that something you'd play? Well, Ethereal Echoes of Yore is an indie MMORPG developed by Swedish studio Jellyberry, and this MMO is meant to bring you back as it is heavily inspired on old school MMOs such as Tibia Online, Ultima Online, and RuneScape. They have taken what is great about these games and added a more modern MMO RPG take to them. For those of you who follow this channel solely for Ashes of Creation, well you will find features you love here as well that you could experience while you wait, such as ever-changing worlds, dynamic events, in-depth crafting, a complex class system, and a high risk versus reward philosophy. Upon launch, which is happening today, May 1st, there will be free-to-play servers for those jumping in and looking to try out the game to make sure it's something that you are interested in, which will gain you access to the starting island called the Solitary Isles. If you find yourself enjoying the game, there will be a monthly subscription of $10 a month, which will then allow you to access the mainland, and this is really the main way Ethereal will stay afloat. There's no pay to win, and there's no selling armor and weapon skins. They want the armor you wear to be what the player actually has equipped and not some skin of something cooler. But there will still be an in-game shop that sells things such as pets, furniture for your home, and capes, and a few backer bundles for a limited amount of time. After the first two weeks of the game's life though, those free-to-play servers will lose their free-to-play tag and people who want to jump in will be able to play through these solitary aisles on any server. But if you want to leave these aisles, you will still need the subscription to play past this point. If you do end up jumping in on launch though, be patient as this is an indie MMORPG and there will be a massive amount of players going through the floodgates and you'll probably find yourself sitting in a queue and there may or may not be server issues that need to be addressed like with all big launches. When you jump in you will notice there are a few different servers to choose from as you can see on the screen right now. There are full out PvP servers and PvE servers which will allow for instance PvP only. And if there is a need for more servers with launch, well more are already waiting to go. When you go to create your character you will be able to create one character per realm. There are no factions to choose from and you will want to take your time with this process as there will be no name changes, no server transfers and no appearance transfers. They want players characters to have meaning to them and the one you make will be the one you stick with on that server. There are 20 different classes for you to choose from as you can see on this chart made by one of the ethereal community members named Agonis. These classes are split throughout the holy trinity of tanks, DPS and support. For ranged DPS you have the shadow caster that utilizes AoE skills and the elementalist which uses more traditional piano style combat having you cast elemental combos. There is the hunter which is your ranged bow and arrow user that uses no magic and the ranger which uses the bow and arrow and a little bit of magic. For melee DPS, you'll have the Berserker who uses two-handed weapons with minimal defensive abilities, the Warden which uses two-handed weapons and has healing defensive abilities, the Crusader who uses two-handed weapons with barrier defensive abilities, the Spellblade who uses swords and magic abilities, the Shadowblade who is also a melee magic user, and the Assassin which uses daggers and swords and is more of a classic assassin that you've come to expect. Oh, and then there's a Brawler which is a melee class that uses claw weapons. For tank classes, there is the Dragon Knight which is an off tank with a shield and self heal abilities, the demon knight which is an off tank with two handed weapons that does big damage, the guardian which just does straight tanking, and earth guard which is a tank that uses magic abilities. For support you have a druid that does nature aoe healing, a priest that does single target heals, the enchanter which supports the party using buffs, shields, and damage mitigation which is basically a bard without an instrument, and the cultist which uses buffs, debuffs, and healing abilities. Ethereal takes place in a world called Erumessa, a dynamic, ever-evolving world where player action matters and the achievements and failures of those players can shape the land as time goes on, making each server feel truly unique in its own way. As you can see from the world map, the world is pretty hefty in size with various biomes such as a snowy mountain region, a desert, and a massive forest region along with a few small islands attached. When jumping in, you will start out with a tutorial and once you get through the tutorial, you will start in a zone called the Solitary Isle which is said to have about 20 hours worth of content. This is that free to play area that will give you a good idea of the game and how its systems would work, so you should know by the time you're done here if this is the MMO for you. After you jump into this world and you create your very 
very first character, you'll start with very limited sets of spells and abilities. As you venture through these solitary aisles and complete your first class quest, you are offered a new ability, and additionally, your first class quest on the mainland will unlock several abilities to flesh out your class further. As a result, most classes will have at least the baseline level toolkit available to them already after completing the first two class progression quests. After this point, you can learn a new ability from your class trainer every five levels, and after level 30, you should have your baseline class kit. The world has a weather system and a time of day system that will have a pretty big effect on the server as well, such as certain fish only being able to be caught at certain times, certain minerals only being revealed depending on the type of moon that is out, and the world is really, really dark at night if you don't have a light source. It is said to be near impossible to see where you're going, which also would apply to caverns and dungeons. The world is also filled with in-game events, spawning from smaller, more local events to larger, more region-changing events. The outcome of these events are dependent on the communities within each server, and the outcomes can greatly impact the world. Some examples of these events could be things such as a drought in a local village, cults trying to summon ancient demons, or towns under siege that players will need to defend. When it comes to questing, Ethereal is divided up into two types of quests. The first being what they are calling tasks, which are your more simplistic NPC-given jobs, such as killing nearby monsters or collecting certain items. Whereas what they label as a quest in the game is a story-driven, multi-layered adventure with differing outcomes depending on your actions. Jumping into quests in the beginning will be somewhat simple, but as you set out to explore the world further, you will be taking on more in-depth quests such as dealing with political and religious faction divisions. Ethereal's crafting system is based on three core principles. One being no material becomes truly redundant. They don't want older materials to be useless, so they end up tying some of the more introductory materials into later game systems such as player housing. The second principle is they want crafting to have an impact, where you get an epic feeling when you create something and it always has a purpose to it. All items in the game take effort to craft and a good amount of profession skill, which leads into the third principle of your skill always matters. You can fail crafting in the beginning and the better you get, the higher quality items you can craft, along with increasing the durability of said item. Crafting XP is based on the value of material used, and you can always level on lower level materials but gain more from higher levels. Better quality items will also grant more experience. For crafting professions, you have alchemy, blacksmithing, construction, cooking, fletching, leatherworking, and tailoring. And for gathering professions, you have fishing, herbalism, mining, skinning, and woodcutting. The game though doesn't want you to be a master of every skill. Although it's not impossible, it will take you a lot of time to get it done, and it will not be an easy feat whatsoever. The economy in the game is localized by town. Your banks don't link up from town to town or your storage, so each town has its own internal economy which can affect prices of items depending on where you go, and really putting in emphasis on their caravan system. There will also be NPCs that play a role in the economy as well, with things such as timed restocks of certain items that they sell. Caravans can be used to send items of varying importance between players who are long distances away from each other. They can be sent to specific players by entering their name and the town they reside in, and will be the only system to transport goods between settlements outside of manual travel. Each caravan will offer different tiers, ranging from your basic transport caravan that carries minor goods, to royal caravans where players could find higher tier loot within. Royal caravans will also be harder to attack than normal, and players are able to lose their caravans if another player kills all the guards surrounding it, and the sender and the receiver will lose all the items within it. But those stealing the caravan will only gain access to a certain amount of the items. All of this will still be protected under the law through what is called the infamy system, which we will die into in a minute. Housing is also a big part of Ethereal and the economy. Players will have access to non-instance plots of land where they can create any type of house they would like, from shops to crafting workshops to giant mansions. These zones players can build their homes in include cities and the wildlands, but if you are trying to buy the land yourself and don't have some allocated to you from your guild, it will be very costly. Land ownership can grant you many perks, such as earning gold through building a market and providing players with services such as repairs. There are three types of PvP content in the world of Ethereal. Matchmade modes, open world PvP, and event-based wars. Matchmade modes include arenas, which are 1v1, 2v2, and 3v3, and then there are battlefields, which can be 20-player free-for-all battles or objective-based battles, being 5v5v5 and 8v8, which include things such as capture the flag and objective control. 
normal. For open world PvP, as long as you are on a PvP server, you can attack any player you see, but doing so will be a criminal act. What this means is you can become an enemy of the kingdom through what is called the infamy system. And anytime you do illegal activities such as trespassing, theft, or murder, you will gain more infamy. And the more you do these things, the more the world will respond to you, such as having armed guard patrols attack you and player and NPC bounty hunters come after you. Doing so will increase your chances at dropping items on death as well, and you cannot reset your infamy. Once an outlaw, always an outlaw. But luckily, there is a place in the world where outlaws can reset side called the Wildlands. This area is pretty similar to RuneScape's Wilderness, where it is a free-for-all PvP area where there are no laws or armed guards or bounties, but you will be dropping all of your loot when you die. The Wildlands will also have things for those who don't want to be outlaws, such as rare crafting resources and increased XP and loot from monsters that may make the venture here worth the risk in some cases. For event-based wars, there are world events that the world triggers based on certain parameters, such as two clans fighting. And with these two clans, you can pick a side, and whichever clan wins will drastically change the geopolitical landscape of the world. For PvE, there is world bosses you can take on, dungeons you can explore along with all the things we previously talked about, such as housing, crafting, and questing. When you die from any of these, whether that be PvP or PvE, there is a chance to drop items based on a per slot basis. But if the level difference in PvP, for example, is very significant between the players, the lower level is going to have the lesser chance to drop things up to a point of not dropping things at all if the level difference is too significant. There is also what is called the Mages Guild, where you can enchant items that will be teleported back to the guild when you die that can be returned to you with a fee if you have a really rare item you don't want to lose. Overall, Ethereal Echoes of Yore is shaping up to be a great MMORPG for those looking for something to pass the time with, giving all types of players something to achieve without having to worry about any sort of pay-to-win monetization. Will you be jumping into Ethereal Echoes of Yore this week? Let me know in the comments down below, and as always, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.